The animal is holding a small piece of paper between its paws. The message written on this paper is illegible. We are supposed to find six birds and there is one missing. Two possibilities. Either one of the birds has flown and taken our hopes with it. Or, despite our misfortune, there is still a chance that the last bird is completely diurnal and is perched somewhere awaiting the day. What shall we do, Holmes? Stay up, Watson, and wait. Wait for the dawn and the first signs of life from the bird. Watson! Watson! I hear a bird's call. It would appear that our prayers were answered. We must seek it quickly, Watson. Incredible. Based on this bird book, it is a Lemergier. I have heard about them, but I have never seen one with my own eyes. Since you never leave our lodgings, I'm surprised that you've even heard talk of them. Now what? Lemergier, Watson. If only it was Greek and had a great big turtle. A uh, what? A turtle, Watson. Have you never heard of Aeschylus, the philosopher? I must still be sleeping. This is all a dream. Maybe the whole thing has been a dream. It must be the side effects of the nightmare I was having. Any moment, Mrs. Hudson will... Watson, get a hold of yourself, man. You aren't dreaming. Our mission, England's honor. Holmes, did I really hear you talk about a Greek, bearded vulture, a turtle, and a philosopher all in the same sentence? Indeed, Watson. Listen carefully. Aeschylus was an ancient Greek philosopher. He had a phobia of enclosed spaces and would never enter a building of any kind. This was as a result of the fact that it was predicted that he would die by being crushed by a roof. Do you know how Aeschylus died, Watson? His skull was smashed by a turtle that fell from the skies. We cannot escape our destiny. A turtle carries its house on its back, and its shell is its roof. But where did this turtle come from, and why did it fall exactly on the head of this poor man? Some would say that it was the divine power attached to the prophecy. There is, however, a more pragmatic explanation. The Lemergier, or bearded vulture, likes to eat the bone marrow from the cadavers of large animals. To extract the marrow, it grabs the bone in its claws and flies to a great height. Then it lets go over a rocky area, where the bones smash and split open, giving it a lavish feast. Some of them have been observed in Greece behaving the same way with turtles as they normally do with bones, to get at the flesh. Aeschylus was of an advanced age at the time of his death, and his bald head would have reflected light like a smooth rock. Had he been under the shelter of a house, he would never have been hit with a turtle in the first place. I'll let you ponder the philosophical points of the matter, but coming back to our Lemergier, we'll need some bait and something with which to capture the beast. Holmes, I will take care of finding a turtle. I'll return as soon as possible. Really, Watson? I commend your industry and valour. That leads me to find something to trap it. However, Holmes, would you happen to have a few quid on you? No, but you can make a detour via Baker Street. There must be at least ten sovereigns hidden in our lodgings. Just a little memory exercise that I set up. At the boredom, you know. Strange place to stow money. Strange place to stow money. Strange. A sovereign. Perfect. Strange place to stow money. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. A sovereign. 
Perfect. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Strange place to stow money. How much for one of these turtles? The champion isn't within your means, chap. The loser will set you back ten sovereigns. How much for one of these turtles? The champion isn't... While you wait, Watson, I need something big with which to catch the Lamagier. It's a rather large bird. This net would be perfect if it wasn't in such a pitiful state. I'll need some string to repair it. This string is perfect. I'll get to work while I await Watson. Here's your turtle, Holmes. Watson, you impress me. This specimen will be ideal. I need to find somewhere to put it down, Watson. Stand back, Watson, as we wait for our bearded friend to descend. I hope you'll be able to catch it on the first try, Holmes. Ginger would never forgive me. Ginger? Yes, the turtle. Of course, of course. There's our starving friend, Watson, and the last paper. At last. I thought we'd never succeed. Now can we head back to our lodgings and sleep for part of the day? We have until this evening. We are heading back to Baker Street, Watson, but not to sleep. We have time for a meal, and then we must make haste to the next location that we will ascertain with the help of these messages. Uh, but I'm done for, Holmes. As Ashila said, I think the slain care little if they sleep or rise again. Come, Watson, make haste. I can no longer take it, regardless where these papers that were found on those damn birds at the Tower of London lead. You'll be going without me, Holmes. 
Plus, this business cannot remain secret much longer. And Scotland Yard would like to take over the case again, and I would gladly give it to them. You are correct, Watson. Even if Chief Warder Smith sent two-thirds of his men on holiday to minimize the risk of leaks, the authorities would be aware with very little delay that something was afoot in London. And they would want to take over the case, as you say. But Scotland Yard is once again facing a strong opponent and is up against a resounding failure. There is no question of my stepping down or even thinking of resting, not while England is being menaced by Arsène Lupin. As you wish, Holmes. If only I had known that one day you would be giving me lessons in patriotism. Now, try to figure out the meaning of these messages. But how, Holmes? They are illegible, Watson. But as Lupin seems to be a magician when the mood strikes him, it may well be a conjuring trick. <laughs>